Hi, I'm Greg. Welcome to my shed. I'm shooting this after I've actually finished doing the uh, doing the measurements, so you'll get to see how I did it and then what numbers we came up with. I want to make up some new hubs for this, but the taper is unknown. When it comes to measuring a taper on a machine, there's lots of information on how to measure on with gauges and bits and pieces, but there's not a lot on actually measuring the taper. Not that I've seen anyway. There's not a lot on actually measuring the taper on the machine and getting it right. So I'm pretty lucky here because I've got an X and a Y axis that I can move. But the problems that I'm dealing with here is that I've got a, a spindle that can be up or down and it can be left or right. And while I've got everything set out to the same numbers, that doesn't mean that it's close. Well, it'll be close, but it's not close enough for actually measuring the taper. And you'll see that in the results when I've measured one side. And those numbers didn't make sense. So what you've got to do is you've got to measure the bottom side and the top side, and the combined number is actually your taper. Likewise, you'd be measuring this side and that side. And even further to that, if you wanted to set this up so it was perfectly horizontal, what you do is now is you run the dial gauge down the top and the dial gauge down the bottom, and you'd be looking for the same taper. You'd be looking for the same numbers over the same travel distance. So I'll show you how I did it, and I'll show you whether we ended up with a standard taper or something weird. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm measuring the taper on um, on this. And what I've done is I've got this set on my shaft. I'll check the shaft for run out. And it's maybe within a couple of ten thousandths of an inch. And I've adjusted the table backwards and forwards until I get the highest reading that I can. I've got this dial gauge measuring the table travel inwards because it's easier to count inwards and this gauge will go up so it's easier to count. So 100th there, 200th there, 300th there, 400th there, exactly 500 thou there and this has gone up 52 thou so we'll just find that back one two three four Five, we've got zero there. That's actually one TA up now, so what's just double checking the zero. So we've got zero there. One, two, three, four. So again, we're on 52, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the table so it's 53 there what I'm doing is I'm moving the table left and right till I get the highest reading on the gauge so that's 53 there so that's per so that measurement is 53 thou per side. So it'll be 106 thou per half inch, which will be 212 thou per inch of taper.
So if you'll excuse my writing, half inch is 53 thou. So that's two times equals 106 thou per half inch. Two times equals 212 thou per inch. Um, so you could just take this number and multiply it by four, but I'm just demonstrating it. So now we'll go and see if that's a standard taper. So I've done a bit of maths. 53 thou per half inch of taper on one side equals 106 thou per half inch total taper, which obviously is, when you add it up, is multiplied out, I should say. It's 212 thou per one inch. So I converted it back to metric because I know the machine's metric, hoping that it'll come out at something sensible. <coughs> now that's 5.3848 millimetres per 25.4 millimetres, which is 4.24 millimetres per 20 millimetres, because it's easy to convert it back to 20, um, to 20 millimetres. Then half of that's 2.12 millimetres per 10 millimetres, or 21.2 millimetres per 100 millimetres but it's 21.2%, it's just an odd angle. Um, now, when I get out my trusty book with, well, let's see if we can see it, useful tapers and angles, tapers per inch, I probably should have converted to 25 millimetres of diameter, it doesn't matter anyway. Taper per inch, 212 is just odd. You've got 200 there, 250 there. Um, it falls somewhere between 1 and 4 and 1 and 5. So, regardless of how we look at it, it's just an odd taper. This is a really handy book, too, by the way. It's got a lot of good information in it. Um, yes, and there's a cat hanging around here bumping the pole, uh, bumping the uh, stand. Come here. So, um, this is the troublemaker. Looking for some attention. So, uh, yeah. Well, at least now I know what I've got to set up when I'm uh, machining the hubs to get them accurate. So, uh, we'll go from there. Alright, sorry about the noise of the run. What I've done here is I'm measuring the top of the spindle now because if the spindle is not exactly horizontal what I'll get is I'll get a different set of numbers we've got 43, oh sorry, I've got 53 thou on when I measure the bottom so now we're measuring the top so we'll wind in along the spindle 500 thou so that's 100 200, 300, 400, 100, that's 500. What I did was I'd already set up the, um, the table to get my maximum reading and now what I'm doing is I'm winding backwards and forwards so that I get my maximum reading across the spindle which is 47 thou. So we'll work that, sit down, we'll add that up, and we'll see what we come up with as a number. Okay. The bottom taper was 53 thou per half inch. The top taper was 47 thou per half inch of travel, that is. The combined is 100 thou per half inch, which is 200 thou per one inch. Now, I get out my trusty fitting and machining book, um, which is published by RMIT. It's an old book, but it's got lots of useful information in it. And what happens here is when we look at it, 200 thou per inch of diameter is five millimeters per 25 mil, per 25 mil. So being a metric machine, that's expected, which when we come across here, is one and five. So it makes sense, knowing that it's a metric machine, that we're going to see 
an expected metric taper. Um, yeah, anyone who uh, who wants to learn a little bit, or wants to refer to a bit, or wants to um, hand something on to uh, the kids or the nephews or whatever, um, this is a good book. Once you've read this book or you refer to it every now and then, you'll find that it's very handy. So anyway, now we know it's one and five taper, um, we can actually do some accurate machining to make new hubs.